Ashley, hanging out down under. You're in Sydney, Australia. How have you been enjoying it over there? Uh, it's been phenomenal considering the circumstances, just getting an opportunity to coach and to be with, you know, around higher level professional athletes and, and kind of get hands on experience coaching when, in a year where, you know, we missed everything. So I think it's been a phenomenal experience and Sydney is not a bad place to be in the wintertime. Um, so all around, just a really great time. Currently coaching with the Sydney Blue Sox. How did that whole opportunity come about? Um, well, I just like many other times in my life, I'm a really curious person. And so I was uh, over the COVID, you know, qu quarantine time, we were doing a ton of Zooms with the Yankees um, involving different departments and just being able to learn from each other. And so I was sitting in on every single catching Zoom that was going on and just really learning our philosophy inside and out and learning more about that part of the game. And I uh, just heard one day, one of the coaches said, hey, do we want to send any players over to Australia to play in the winter league because they're, they don't have any COVID going on over there. And I thought, hey, <laughs> I was like, hey, what about coaches? So that's how it happened. I just kind of overheard by chance that this guy knew one of our coaches was really good friends with the manager here. And we got connected and now I'm in Sydney. <laughs> Were the Yankees pretty cool with the whole process of you going over there in the off season? Oh yeah. I think, I think um, just like the players, like they were happy for me to get an opportunity to get hands on experience, especially given that this was my technically first year in professional baseball as a hitting coach. Um, although I've been in professional baseball for a long time, but to get that hands on experience working with guys every day, just like kind of the, the ins and outs of like what a season would feel like um, it's different to, exchanging video with our players from the Yankees um, was fine, but it's really different, of course, as any coach would know, to be in, you know, in the area when they're struggling, when they're doing well, what should we change, kind of working, uh, like I said, just hands-on. I think they were happy for me to go and, and get that experience wherever I could, especially given the circumstances. What's the biggest thing you've learned so far? Uh, I mean, kind of just, you know, what I thought I would learn, which is just, when, th when things go wrong, you know, what, what do I need to work on when I'm, I'm not doing well with a certain pitch or in a certain count or situation, kind of the mental things, because it's easy to coach in a bubble. You know, it's easy to, to set the ball on the tee or do flips and everyone looks good in a cage type of thing. So I think just getting um, experience with the mental side of I've experienced that myself as a softball player at a high level, but uh, that was a while ago and you know, it's different. And so what do you say to a player? What, what do you not say to a player? You know, what, when is the time to not say anything? And so I think just those nuances have been, again, great for me to have an opportunity during this time when there's not a lot of organized professional baseball going on in the entire world. So uh, been extremely valuable. One guy you have been working with, Manny Ramirez. What has that been like? Oh, Manny, uh, he is, uh, he's a unique human being. I think when people say Manny being Manny, I don't know if they understand, you know, when you see the things that he did on the field, the high-fiving of the fan or laying in the outfield doing a snow angel. He's so lighthearted and he takes what he does seriously, but he t doesn't take himself seriously. You know, and I think that the biggest thing I've taken away from that is he just realizes the impact that he can have on, someone's day, someone's life. And so if somebody stops us, because he does get stopped here in Australia, even if someone stops us, he's just the mo the nicest human ever. We could be having a really intense, deep conversation about something and he's, we're, we're debating something and someone stops him and he's just, all of a sudden he's just, he's Manny, how they think Manny should be. And so I think he's just a really incredible human being and someone that I've learned a lot from more so about life than anything else. And he's just, incredibly open-minded I mean the amount of things that he's asking me about hitting and I'm thinking this is the best right-handed hitter of all time like why is he asking me about this but he just just like me I think that's why we click so well he wants to learn from everyone and he may or may not use it but he knows that he may use it in five years or he may use it in a certain situation or whatever and so he's just trying to gather as much knowledge as he can and he sifts through that to know what he'll apply to something else and that's I think you know just lets you know why he was so good you had a big opportunity last year with the Yankees. Of course, COVID had a different idea with everything that happened with the minor leagues. What are your expectations for 2021? 
My expectations are uh, that we will be on a baseball field <laughs> with players. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, there's been some announcements made and it seems like some things are going ahead on, on time and that's really exciting. However, I don't think anyone's holding their breath. I think we're waiting to see what happens and just trying to trust that Major League Baseball is doing their, their best to make sure that everyone's safe and also make sure that we get some baseball in. And that's definitely a delicate balance. So just trusting what they say and being patient as we have been. Rachel, thanks for waking up early to join us and enjoy Australia. Thank you. Good to see you.